Let's get rig control running on the Mint laptop. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So last week we took a look at getting Linux running on the Evolve laptop. Today we're going to do several different things. First of all, I'm going to show you guys how to use the backup feature built into Linux Mint. Then we're going to install FL Rig. We're going to install Hamlib. And finally, we're going to install the GPS software. So let's go ahead and jump over to the laptop and get going. Okay, so before we start installing anything new, let me show you guys real quick how to use TimeShift in Linux Mint to back up your laptop. Go ahead and press the Windows key on the keyboard. That's going to bring up the menu, and then just start typing TimeShift. Make sure that TimeShift is highlighted and press Return. It will ask you for your pseudo password, so go ahead and give it that information, and it's going to ask you to select the snapshot type. I'm going to use rsync and click next. It'll take it a couple of minutes to gather the information that it needs about the system. And then it's going to ask you where you want to back up to. I have an external micro SD card plugged into the SD card slot. So I'm going to use that. And I highly recommend you purchase a SD card and use it in that slot. That way your backups are not on the same drive as your main OS. Once you've selected where you want to back up the system to, go ahead and click Next. And it's going to ask you how often you want to back up your system. For me, I personally think weekly is okay, and then I can back it up as needed if I need it more often than weekly. And I'm going to tell it to keep the last half dozen backups. Once you've made your selection, go ahead and click Next. On this screen here, you can choose to use or exclude the files in your home directory. Personally, I choose include all files for both of these. Go ahead and select next, and that's it. The setup is complete, so we'll click finish there. Now, we do need to run the first one manually, so go ahead and click create. Now, once it finishes up, you can add some notes if you'd like to the backup that you just did. Come right here and just click in that box. Add the notes that you want and press return. Now that we've backed up our system, let's go ahead, close this down and get Hamlib installed. We'll start by opening up the browser and navigating to hamlib.github.io. Once we're on this site, let's go ahead and come right here to Hamlib 4.4 and click on that one. Let's scroll down the page, and let's click on this very first option, 4.4.tar.gz. Once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize the browser, and we can open up our file explorer. Navigate over to Downloads. We're going to right-click on this new package and tell it to extract here. Once it extracts, let's go ahead and double-click on that new directory. And then we're going to right-click somewhere in an empty space and tell it to open in Terminal. Now, before we begin, let's take just a couple of seconds and update the system. So, sudo apt update and an sudo apt upgrade. Go ahead and press return and give this just a few minutes to get done. Once that completes, I'm just going to clear the screen real quick and let's install a couple of dependencies. So sudo apt install lib usb hyphen 1.0 hyphen 0. And then we're going to repeat the same thing, lib usb hyphen 1.0 hyphen 0 hyphen dev. Let's go ahead and press return to install those two dependencies. After those finish up, we can go ahead inside your hamlib-4.4 directory and run dot forward slash configure. Once that finishes up, let's run the make command next. And let's follow that up with sudo make install. Finally, we can run sudo space ld config. Now let's clear the screen and I'm going to run where is rigctl. If everything installed correctly, you'll get a response that it's in the user local bin directory. 
One other command you might want to use is RIGCTL space hyphen hyphen version. And that will let you know that you have Hamlib 4.4 installed. Okay, so now we're going to move on to installing FL Rig. So I'm going to run the CD command, which takes us back to our home directory and clear the screen. Now, before we install FL Rig, we've got to install a whole host of dependencies. I'll leave a link to this list down in the description below, so you'll be able to copy and paste this command into your terminal. Once that finishes up, open your browser, and we're going to go ahead and navigate over to FL XML RPC. Again, I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. Once we get here, and this file is required for pretty much anything you're going to do when you're trying to install FL Rig, FL Digi, or any of the, of the other FL tools. We're going to go ahead and click on this one here, the tar.gz file, and give that just a second to download. We can minimize our browser, and let's navigate back to our downloads directory. Once inside your downloads directory, go ahead and right click on that package that we just downloaded and say extract here. Let's navigate into the new folder and go ahead and right click again in a blank space and tell it to open in terminal. Our first command is going to be dot forward slash configure space hyphen hyphen prefix equals forward slash user forward slash local space hyphen hyphen enable hyphen static and go ahead and press return next we will run the make command once make finishes up let's run sudo space make space install and finally sudo ld config again and that should be all of the dependencies we need for fl rig so let's go ahead and head back to the web browser and this time we're going to navigate to the FL Rig download site. Let's grab the latest, which is 1.4.7 as of the time of this recording, tar.gz. We'll click on it to download just like we've done for the other files. We can minimize this, head back to our downloads directory, and now we can right click on FL Rig and say extract here. Open up the FL Rig directory right click and yep you guessed it open in terminal just like before we're going to run dot forward slash configure space hyphen hyphen prefix equals forward slash usr forward slash local space hyphen hyphen enable hyphen static we can follow that up with the make command and once that one finally finishes up, we can run sudo space make space install. And for good measure, let's run sudo ld config. We'll clear that screen and we should be able to run where is FL rig. If all went according to the plan, you'll find it in user local bin. Let's go ahead and configure that for a radio. Now, before we'll be able to use FL Rig to control the radio, we do need to get our user added to the correct group. In order to do that, we're going to run sudo space user mod space hyphen lowercase a space hyphen uppercase g. We're going to add the group TTY and we're going to give it our username. In my case, KM4ACK. Go ahead and press return. It's gonna ask for our pseudo password, we'll give it that, and we're done. While we're at it, we might as well go ahead and add our user to the dial-out group. We don't need it for this video, but we are going to need it later. So we'll go ahead and add ourselves to the dial-out group as well. Now, if we just run groups, you can see that we're in the TTY group and the dial-out group. So the first thing we want to know is how is our radio listed in the Linux system? So let's run ls space forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by hyphen id. 
And you can see that the 705 that I plugged in is showing up right here. So this is the information we're going to use in FL Rig. Go ahead and press the Windows key on your keyboard and start typing FL Rig. If yours doesn't show up here right away, you may need to reboot your system in order for it to register in the menu system. Go ahead and open FL Rig, and of course we're going to get Transceiver not responding. That's to be expected since we haven't set anything up. Let's go to Config, Setup, and Transceiver. On this window here, we can select the rig is the ICOM 705. The next box down is where we're going to select that information that we saw just a second ago. So that should be the very first one, and it ends in IF00. Now, real quick, I do want to point this out. You'll see two different listings for the 705, IF00 and IF02. They're identical except for those last little identifiers. The first one is used for cat control. The second one we'll be using in just a few minutes for the GPS on the 705. So let's head back into FL Rig. Once I've entered those first two boxes, typically the rest of it we can leave at default. Let's go ahead and press Initialize. And there you have it. Now we have FL Rig controlling our radio. Let's go ahead and tackle the GPS next. So the first thing we need to do is install several applications. Python 3-GPS, GPSD-Clients, GPSD, Crony, Python 3-GI-CAIRO, and Lib. GPS hyphen dev. I'll leave a link to all of these down in the description below so you guys can copy and paste this command as well. We'll go ahead and get all of those installed. Okay, so once that finishes up, let's clear the screen and let's run sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash crony forward slash crony dot conf. Press return. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this file, and we're going to paste the following. Again, I'll leave this information down in the description below so you can copy and paste. Let's press Control s to save it, Control x to get out of it. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and tell the system where our GPS is located. So if you remember, we ran ls forward slash dev serial forward slash by hyphen ID before. And that gave us this information here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight this, right click and copy. Now let's run sudo space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash gpsd. Oh, and I forgot the nano command. So let's put nano in there and try that again. In devices, we're going to put forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by hyphen ID forward slash because that's the full path. And then I'm going to right click and say paste. And I'm just pasting in that information that I copied just a second ago. Now, especially for ICOM radios, you want to set USB auto to be false. And for GPSD options, we want to pass the hyphen N and hyphen B switches. Let's go ahead and press Control S to save this and Control X to get out of it. Now let's restart our GPSD client. So we'll run sudo space system ctl restart gpsd. Go ahead and press return and let's run cgps. And it looks like my GPS doesn't have a lock inside today, but you can see that it is pulling in some of the satellite information here. And as soon as my GPS unit gets a lock, we would see all of the other data, the latitude, the longitude, the grid square, the time, all of that stuff in this file. Go ahead and press Q to get out of that screen.
Now we have our rig control installed, we have FL rig installed, and we have the GPS up and running. I think that's enough for this week. We'll pick back up next week and continue on with this build. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.